Why are phone hardware switches important for privacy? Currently, only the Librem 5, which is about to be released, has hardware kill switches built in. I'm going to explain why this is critical and why Android phones or iOS phones can never really be secure or private. Let's start. I've been asked many times to review different OS operating system rootkits for Android and have been shown some mobile phones that are supposedly secure and private. And I've constantly been giving a thumbs down response. A rootkit or an alternate OS is also referred to as a custom ROM, read only memory. Anyway, that's the same thing. Loading a new OS on an Android or jailbreaking iOS to load new software. Now Apple makes it very hard to jailbreak an iPhone so usually this is a possibility only when using an older iOS version. Here's an example of some of the questions I get. Can you be secure with a Huawei phone running Lineage OS? How about this new Graphene OS? How about Kai OS? How about this phone from Dark Matter called a Katim phone? What about a black phone? Then I'm past tweets from cybersecurity people selling supposedly hardened Androids. And the headline is that the standard iOS and Google Android are unsafe and you need to use a hardened customized Android OS for your phone. I've responded to this in several live streams and I will now summarize it in this short video. The problem folks is that in order to answer the question, you have to understand where the potential threats come from. When experts say they have hardened a phone from attacks, typically they're talking about cybersecurity, how the phone is harder to hack, how it will be difficult to extract its contents. For example, there may be a desire to encrypt photos on the phone so your naked pics don't slip out and show up on social media. If that is the objective, then that can be achieved with some customized Android. However, if you think you can stop the tracking being done by Apple, Google, and your phone carrier and other third parties, then you're sadly mistaken. Unfortunately, as long as you carry a regular mobile phone, you are chipped. You might as well inject the chip under your skin since you will never let go of the phone. It is impossible to achieve privacy with a standard mobile phone. I don't care what OS you put on it. Meaning, you can't take a regular commercial phone from typical makers like Apple, Samsung, LG, Ericsson, Huawei and expect to turn it into a secure and private phone by software. The reason for this is that the privacy invasion comes from the hardware and much of the scary bits of it is controlled by firmware, meaning software that is built into the hardware, and also into the flashed ROM of the hardware. The only way to achieve privacy from external parties is to have separation between the OS and these built-in spy hardware so you can turn them off. These are hardware switches or kill switches. At the moment, only one company has advertised that it makes devices with a kill switch and that is Purism. And the device they will be releasing shortly is the Librem 5 phone. I am not telling you to jump and get a Librem 5 phone since it will be many months before you can even get one. And this may not be the kind of phone that will work for many of you that are not that techy since a Librem 5 is a Linux phone. But I will explain to you what the dilemma is with spying hardware and how this is impossible to stop on existing mobile phones. The two major pieces that we need to be concerned about that constantly spy on us are one, the Wi-Fi chip and two, the cell baseband chip. 
I will explain what two hardware pieces do to our privacy. First, the worst of them all is the Wi-Fi chip. In all modern phones and even computers, the Wi-Fi chip is built into the motherboard. It is not an external device like it used to be in the old days. This removes it from the control of the OS. The Wi-Fi is always running. First problem with the Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi sends out a probe request, which can be several times a second on Android and once a second to a few minutes on iOS, depending on whether the phone is sleeping or not. The probe request is a radio transmission, which actually transmits your device MAC address. This is the equivalent of the serial number of your phone. This can be detected by third-party receivers. Any hacker can run software to read this. This can detect your presence from far away before you even identify yourself. I can track how many times you've been to the supermarket each week, or which aisle you were looking at at Walmart, or that you entered a federal building. And I can't turn this off as long as the phone has power. And this is done automatically by the Wi-Fi chip. A second problem with your Wi-Fi. Your Wi-Fi is constantly scanning for Wi-Fi access points. It's also emitting a signal of your preferred access point using their network name or SSID. As it scans for access points or Wi-Fi routers as they are more commonly known, the Wi-Fi chip collects the MAC addresses of each router and their signal strength. Hackers know this capability as promiscuous mode. This data is used by Google and Apple. Both these companies and others like Microsoft and Facebook will have a collection of Wi-Fi router MAC addresses and their corresponding locations. Every Wi-Fi router in existence is recorded in these databases and are being reported by Android and iOS devices, both of which also report the GPS location of these routers. If these companies know which router MAC address is near you, they can pinpoint your location within six zucking feet. This is crowdsourced data, so it is quite accurate. In the case of Apple, it's already been admitted that the firmware for this, called Wi-Fi triangulation, is built into the Broadcom Wi-Fi chips of every iPhone. The software was made by the company Skyhook Wireless. If you think you can stop this with airplane mode, I will dissuade you from that kind of thinking. Airplane mode is done at the operating system level meaning Android or iOS. Independent testers have proven that the probe request transmissions occur on the phone even with airplane mode. In fact, airplane mode has no effect. Proboscis mode is a receive-only mode. Your phone is always allowed to receive radio frequencies. So, in conclusion, the only way to stop Wi-Fi spying on us is to turn off the Wi-Fi. Well, we can't if we want to use the rest of the phone. Unless you have a Librem 5. It has a kill switch for Wi-Fi. The second major source of spying on your phone is the cell baseband. The baseband is the chip that allows your phone to talk to your cell carrier on 3G or 4G or LTE. And this should be obvious, but if we forget, the baseband is a radio device. It's transmitting its presence on the 800 megahertz to 1.2 gigahertz in the US. Now, what exactly is it transmitting? You see those bars that show up on the phone that shows you the strength of your connection with a cell tower? As you move around, you will see those bars change. Or sometimes it will change from 3G to LTE and it also reports your cell carrier name. This happens because your phone is transmitting a probe looking for a cell tower. 
Your phone identifies itself with a universally unique ID known as the IMSI or IMSI. Or in 4G, it is a token that translates to the IMZ. The IMZ is used to verify that you have a subscription with a particular carrier and that the IMZ is based on your SIM card. Your phone is also transmitting a unique identifier for your phone, which is the IMEI. This is the hardware identifier like a MAC address. It is unique to you. As you travel around, the cell tower sends data to the phone network that your IMZ has been found in Tower A or that you just switched over to Tower B. So automatically the phone is being tracked as it crosses from tower to tower. On some models, the phone will also report its GPS position which is even more bothersome. And if you're also excited about 5G, 5G can pinpoint your location exactly since the antennas focus on each phone. It's bad enough that your phone can track your exact location even when you're not using the phone. Now, a cell phone carrier will tell you that this is necessary so you get incoming calls and texts as well as app notifications on the internet. But the issue is that you don't have an option. There is no switch that can selectively turn this off except on a Librem 5. To make things worse, government entities and hackers can intercept this radio transmission with the tower and inject themselves as a man in the middle using a fake cell tower. This is done using devices called Stingray and newer versions from a company called the Harris Corporation. Hackers can build their own versions of Stingray nowadays using a transmitter receiver. For example, I have one of these transmitter receivers. It's called Blade RF. One of the most scary things that one can do on a Stingray is to trigger what is called a carrier update. Have you ever gotten that? I get a confirmation box on iOS whenever there's a new carrier update to install. This is when the carrier itself changes the software on the phone in the firmware section of the baseband chip. This is flash memory that cannot be controlled by the OS. I have no idea what software is loaded in that area of the baseband, but let me just state this clearly. The baseband and the rest of the OS share the same memory area, which means they can read each other's data. So three letter agencies or law enforcement agencies or the Harris Corporation can load custom software on your baseband and the only way to eliminate it would be to brick the phone. There are other ways to spy on your phone by hacking into it, by advertisers reading locations and GPS positions, by browser fingerprinting and other device fingerprinting, by Facebook reading MAC addresses, and so on. There are even experiments showing how your location can be figured out solely through the gyro and motion sensors on your phone but a lot of these are enabled by the two radio technologies I'm talking about and these are the two main threats. Only the Librem 5 will have kill switches to turn this off. Outside of that, you will need to put your phone into a Faraday bag but that will render the phone unable to receive calls or messages. Here's some advanced photos of what the motherboard looks like on a Librem 5. You can see the separate carrier baseband on the left side of the board and then the Wi-Fi and GPS chip on the right side of the board. Because they're actually separate modules on the motherboard rather than embedded ICs, they can be removed and turned off. Here's the pic 